Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and I'm here today to talk to you about food and radioactivity. I'm also going to give you the results of my tests of Ito NT, specifically the tea that I now am pretty sure is post Fukushima because I was able to obtain a bottle. In fact, this right here is the bottle I obtained. Let me tell you first what I'm doing about the tea and then I'll go into a little more detail about detecting uh, radioactivity in food. First thing I did was I boiled the tea down. This is just water. I'm illustrating what I did. I boiled the tea down carefully on the stove. And the reason I did this is because water is very good at blocking radiation and thus is a very big problem when you're trying to determine the radioactivity of food. It is best to boil down the water until you get the solids, which I did. And I will show you these in detail. This is a baggie containing tea solids, which I used to make my tests. Anyhow, let's look a little bit into the ways that people would determine the radioactivity of food. Alright folks, so you want to determine if your food is safe or not. Now, we'll get into this bottle of tea here in a minute that I tested. First off, you have a Geiger counter. I have an external sounder on mine. Geiger counters like this are, are technically capable of determining food contaminant or contamination rather, but um, they can detect contaminant, which is in contamination. But the problem is they're not very good at it. As you can see, these Brazil nuts are known to be mildly radioactive. They contain trace amounts of radium. This Geiger counter cannot detect them. I have tried. I, when I put it on this piece of radioactive granite, it detects the radioactive granite just fine. Well, somewhat fine. When you have packaged foods like this where the radioactivity is being emitted in very small amounts and then protected and shielded inside of a material, it becomes basically impossible with this sort of Geiger counter and actually very difficult with a regular one. You may consider the possibility of having to actually open up something like this and test it before using it, which sometimes may damage the product. But keep in mind your goal. If you think it is reasonably possible that you may be receiving radiation as a result of whatever purpose, whatever issue, whatever thing is bothering you, then it may be worth it to you. Natural foods like this are easiest because you can pop a grape out of here, smash the grape, crush the grape and smear it, and then leave it in the sun for a while, or even heat it on a stove until the water has evaporated, leaving the solids for testing. Let me get a better Geiger counter. This Geiger counter has a pancake Geiger Mueller tube. As you can see by looking at it, this tube is significantly larger than the end of this Geiger counter, which is very, very tiny. Let me cut the sound effect off of this one. And let me put the sound effect onto this one. This has its own ability to make sound, but I prefer this little tiny sounding device because I think it sounds better. With our Pro, we get a similar ticking as we did with the other Geiger counter, but watch this. Watch what happens when I put it on top of this. Much more sensitive to the granite. Much more sensitive. And that sensitivity is what's going to allow us to detect food that's radioactive, such as these Brazil nuts. Although I don't believe this to be radioactive. Or these. Or my wine. But we shall see. To give you an idea of, what I, uh, of, of how little the radioactivity can be in such things, let me pull out my book. In my log book, I log everything. And let me tell you just how fine the radioactivity is in the Brazil nuts. You see, the Brazil nuts are known to be radioactive. It's perfectly safe, but it's normal, too. I took this Geiger counter, and I placed it in an area not obviously near this, but in its own shielded area, in a particular configuration so that it was over top of something. And I ran it for one hour. And in a one hour timed count, this Geiger counter has a timing function on it. You push the little timer button down and you set it to whatever you want. In a one hour period of time, I detected 2,280 counts. 2,280 counts. 2,280 counts divided by 60 minutes equals 38 counts per minute. I did this again with the Brazil nuts. And the Brazil nuts were placed underneath the Geiger counter in the same position. The Geiger counter was actually elevated a little. And in a one hour period I received 2488 counts in 60 minutes. 
which equals 41.466 counts per minute. 38 counts base, 41.46 with the nuts. The net result, that is the, the, the count you got from the object, minus the, minus the, the base line, or background if you like, was 3.466 counts per minute. That means that these nuts were 3.466 counts per minute more radioactive than the background. Now, I suggest testing things many times and in detail. Please understand that some objects you test are going to be radioactive. These nuts are radioactive automatically because they're plant, the, the tree that grows them automatically, well, it sucks up uh, radium and other things from the ground and it has potassium in it. This is natural. Bananas, bananas might show up as radioactive. So might potatoes and tomatoes. This makes it very difficult to determine how radioactive something is. You might consider taking uh, plants and, uh, that you know to be completely safe, even, even if you have to spend extra money to buy one, and test them to see what they read, and then use that as a baseline. The, the problem is nat uh, separating natural radioactivity from introduced radioactivity, such as radioactivity from Fukushima. My water is probably just about done. I took this tea and I boiled it down, and I, the reason I boiled it down was to separate the water from it because water is very good at blocking radiation, as I've already said. The result of this was this. Let me make sure this is showing up nicely in the camera for you. Probably not too well, but it's perhaps a couple of grams of solid, rocky-like substances that are kind of gooey and resiny, I guess. These are the solids from the tea. These tea solids were what I tested to test my tea. I put this Geiger counter in a, in a protected place that I know the background count of, but I still took a background count of one hour. And then afterwards, I placed this material, but I didn't have the bag on it, and I had this incredibly close to it within a centimeter's distance and took a reading as well. Let me tell you the readings I got to give you an idea. I will test this some more and continue to test it. First off, let me explain why I think this is post-Fukushima. The printed cap says best by 9, 28, 12. These are, usually have a shelf life of 15 months. So one year from this would have been September 28th of 11. And then you would remove, what is that, uh, three more months from that. So June, uh, July, August, September, so July. This was probably made in July. Yeah, that's definitely that's definitely post Fukushima. Some of my tea has not been like this Wegman's brand, which is also E2, and is not perfectly safe. This I think is safe too. I got 2266 counts as a background. That is 37.766 counts per minute. It's in a slightly different place in my house, but very very similar to my 36.733 base that I got in the previous tests. Slightly different area. So 2266 counts, and when I did, when I scanned the sample, I got 2622 counts in one hour. So 37.766 base versus 43.700 base. The net, the difference between them, the T was 5.934 counts per minute more radioactive. 5.934. That is not very radioactive, by the way. But when I calculated my previous T samples, the pre sample the, the, the pre-Fukushima, it didn't have any any Fukushima radiation, if you will, because it was pre-Fukushima. I got average nets of, um, I've listed them on my previous video, but I got average nets of two and three counts per minute. So I went up, I went up to perhaps two to three counts per minute more than I did before. Which would make sense. There probably is more radiation out there inside of the tea and everything than normal. But there's not enough here to call this anything but a statistical fluke. I'll have to test more to be 100% sure. This is why testing is very important. Now keep in mind, I, I personally am an, ad, an advocate of the tea. I know for a fact that this tea gets tested when it's uh, um, when it's in tea leaf form. Then it gets tested, the water gets tested, and the tea gets tested as it's uh, bottled and prepared. Then as it enters the United States, it gets tested again. So I'm pretty sure it's safe. 
Besides, here in the United States, I was exposed, I'm sure, to iodine-131 and every other radioactive uh, fissile product from fission you can possibly get as a result of this whole Japan situation anyway. There's not much that can be done about that. But regardless, an interesting thing I'm going to throw into the video here that I think you might find interesting is uh, while doing this, for giggles, I was testing some rocks while, with my uh, Geiger counter while I was writing up some of the information here, and I found them to be radioactive. Let me show you what I found. Alrighty, while testing my rock samples in the house, I found these two interesting little rocks. If you look closely at this one, you'll see it actually shines and reflects light. It's a beautiful, beautiful crystal. This is an ugly, ugly, nasty little thing, but it also turned out to be a little bit radioactive. Just a touch, just, just a little tiny bit radioactive. Watch. First, let's examine this one. This is the kind of rock that's only radioactive if you test it for a period of time and see a difference. It's mildly more radioactive in the background by two or three counts per minute at the best. Pathetic. This little guy was a little bit more radioactive. Not much, but a little. As you can see, the reading here has gotten up to 60. Not very much. 74, 84. Not much at all. But kind of interesting to find these guys while I was sitting there testing everything. And that's what happens when you're checking for radiation. Unfortunately, my granite samples turn out to be much more radioactive. Although you gotta love this uh, pancake Geiger Mueller tube. Alrighty. Now before I leave, I figured I should show you guys one more thing because everybody likes high radioactive items. I will show them to you. Alright folks, well, I'm going to end this in a bit of a bang, like I like to do. I have my Geiger counter here, so I'll cut the sound on. I have the regular sound on it. Let me tilt it up so that you can see the readings. And I'm going to end this, the, end this with uh, two parts. First I'm going to remind you that Four or five counts per minute more on my tea in a one hour analysis isn't very much. I believe the tea is still safe, but to make absolutely sure, I've contacted the USDA and I've requested information on it. So as soon as I get that, and after I've done some more testing, I'll let you know. I try not to do too much testing because I have to burn a dollar fifty bottle of tea in order to test it. And that's kind of, it just feels expensive. It's not really expensive, it feels expensive. But to end this on a happy note, I have two pieces of Vaseline glass. This one is kind of amusing because I have it full of, of uh, potassium salt. As you can see, it is pretty radioactive. But not like this one. Well, let's cut the lights off and see what it looks like. Wow, did they ever glow. Look at that. Let's flip this one upside down and see what the base looks like. For those of you who can't see this, 745, 816, 845 I think, hard for me to read, 9,000, it's going up to about 1400 counts. It is significantly more sensitive 
you can see the red dots, then my CRM100, which just isn't really detecting very much. See the CRM? It's just not getting anything. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and um, I believe the tea is safe, but we will see. Bye-bye.